Now, final point number 11 is basically America first. Here's what it says. America will be dependent on no other country. We will conduct no trade that takes away jobs or displaces American workers. Countries who oppose us at the UN will get zero financial help from us. We will be energy independent and build supply chains that never rely on our adversaries. We will only help countries that are willing to defend themselves, like Israel. Here are some of the subpoints. We will unapologetically lead the world by example. A world without American leadership would be a very dark world indeed. Adhere to the new Monroe Doctrine. America will not allow any global enemy, such as China, Russia, or radical Islam, to grow their presence in our hemisphere. No foreign aid to countries that habitually oppose us at the UN. We will not pay dues to the United Nations or any international organization that undermines the national interests of the USA. We will make our international allies pay for their fair share of their own defense. We will not send our kids to do what their kids will not do. Our military will not be used as a peacekeeping force. It exists to protect us by intimidating or killing our enemies. Nation building does not work. We will not waste our treasure or troops doing it. We will always defend our allies, starting with Israel. We'll treat our enemies like enemies. No adversarial foreign government or corporation controlled by an adversarial foreign government can purchase American land. And the weather is always changing. We'll take climate change seriously, but not hysterically. We will not adopt nutty policies that harm our economy or our jobs. We will gradually end all imports from communist China until a new regime honors basic human rights and freedoms. We will build supply chains that rely on American workers and allies. We will not be at the mercy of our enemies for medications or essential commodities. We'll terminate any trade deal that takes away American jobs. America will be energy independent. I read every single bullet point from number 11 because they strike at the heart of economic warfare. The plan is solid. It strengthens America. It steers us away from disaster. I reached out to Senator Scott to see if he'll come into the economic war room to discuss his plan, but I wanted you to start your homework on it in advance. The plan is already being trashed by the establishment, including Democrats and Republican leadership. Don't listen to their noise. Read the plan for yourself either on this website or in our free economic battle plan for this episode. You can get your copy at economicwarroom.com. What I like most about this plan is it addresses the threat to our money, our livelihood, and our way of life. It tackles the big issues that we've covered week after week. Remember, we introduced Rosemary Gibson, who warned almost all of our medication is made in communist China. The plan addresses that. Remember our episodes on voter fraud and insecure election. The plan addresses that. Remember meeting with Kelly Shackerford regarding religious liberty. The plan addresses that. It deals with big tech. It deals with Chinese IP theft. It deals with ESG and woke investing. It deals with bad education and critical race theory. It is really remarkable in its breadth and simplicity, and yet, those in Washington, D.C., big tech and media don't want you reading it. They've trashed it without even linking to it. We're going to make Senator Scott aware of all of this and what the economic war room does that. We're in a global economic war. We have real enemies, both foreign and domestic. They want to fundamentally change America. Let's not let them do it. Remember, what we see as a marketplace, our enemies view as a battle space. This is Kevin Freeman from the Economic War Room.